There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Vasily. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc. And And it it starts starts now. It is February 1st, and this is the month of love, and that's why we have a great show tonight. Are you smitten by the love bug? That's the theme of our show. And it's funny because as soon as that went up, Dr. Pat, on a on social media, people start seeing the love bug. I remember those movies that Disney made about the Volkswagen bug. And it's like, okay, if that's what you're associating with. If good. you're a gar- yeah, if you're a gardener, love bugs are good. But then there's also the uh the euphemistic love bug. Have you been smitten by love and let's face it love affects everybody in one way or another and there's not just one type of love there's all kinds of love romantic love familial love brotherly love there's unrequited love love can be a really great thing but it can really screw a lot of people up and that's why we're here (laughs) um yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> Dr. Pat, I, um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay. Like, I don't even know, like, if we got any pictures of the real love bug. Okay. So when I, when we put that post up, I got a text message back uh, from somebody. Yes. I know it's a bug. Uh, if you look at it, it's got like a little red thing on its back. That must be a little red heart. I don't know. I'm making that up now, uh, but you know, the point about today's show is we're entering a month that is really noted for many things. And of course, Black History Month, so much. But this is a time really to give yourself a love thermometer check. Yeah. Now, this is where you have to check what's in your heart and are you feeling that vibe? Sometimes, Mark, we do it for romantic reasons. But it's also about friendships. It's also about people that we care about. The the antithesis of this, though, is there is the love bug and then there's the other bug. It's not so loving. So today's show is all about that. And, you know, we've got a great lineup today, don't we? We have got people already calling in. Okay, Mark, have you ever been bitten by the love bug? Yeah, one too many times. Um, yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was my answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I was representing this guy, and he was um, very affluent, very articulate. And if he wasn't a sociopath, I don't know who is. And he did, and I won't describe what he, well, yeah, I will, um, because I'm not divulging a name or any details no, no, no. about him. But the thing is, um, he couldn't believe that this woman that he was dating rejected him for a guy that that uh, was a firefighter, someone that made like one fifth that he did. So he took, you know, pictures and, and everybody, you know, I know we all have cameras and people like to take pictures. Don't let take don't let people take pictures of you in compromising positions because he took several of those pictures and sent it to everyone that this woman worked with. Okay. Well, anyway, he gets arrested. I end up representing him. And the judge said, why did he do it? And I said, well, he was in love and love makes you do um, crazy things, foolish things, stupid things, and sometimes illegal things. Well, that's the quote that hit the the media. (laughs) And that was all over the place. And that that's the thing about love. It, it gives meaning and purpose to life. It can make you so filled with, with joy and happiness, but unfortunately love can also be a motivating influence for not such positive purposes and and um it, it it's is a, it's really cool that you brought that up right because we are living in different times now 
Yeah. Right? We are living in different times. But you know what's cool about the love bug, the real love bug? Want to know what's cool? Yeah. First of all, love bugs start their cycle as eggs. Larvae, they grow in tall grasses. But the male love bug hatches first, followed by the females. <sighs> Please. And what I love about them, then they, they get together. They, 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 they mate. They get together. Mating, right? So this is not a Howard Stern show, but it's mating. I, I watched the docu-series on Howard last night. We're going to have to do a show. <laughs> on what is it like for me, Dr. Pat, to grow up with Howard Stern? Um, but part of this is they stay connected for seven days. Yeah. And they fly around together. That's like motorcycle riding. And so I loved reading about this. But the question is, why do they do it? You know, what is it about them? Now, as far as I know, that works really well for them. Not so much for human beings, although there are some human beings that would claim they do that. But this is about really full expression of the wide range of emotions that fall under love. Sometimes things happen and we end up in relationships where in the moment our hearts get broken. But then you look back. And I know for me, I look back and I say, oh, that had to end. It didn't feel like it didn't feel good. But can we express love regardless of what you've experienced? See, that's what we're talking about today yeah. is when you get bit by this love bug, there's no turning back. You learn how to put hate and resentment to a different place. Don't you think, Mark? Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned hate because people think that the opposite of love is hate, but it isn't. It's total indifference because hate, like love, requires commitment. You know, and 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 what I've seen, you know, my practice as a lawyer and of course as a medium, and I know you as a psychologist have definitely seen this. People, oh, I love you, I love you, love, and then something goes wrong. And then that as much as they love that person becomes as much as they revile and can't stand that person. And mature, responsible people realize, OK, the relationship has run its course. I don't like you. Let's um, let's split. But that doesn't always happen. Then there turns into the revenge factor. There turns into all the antics and histrionics and crazy behaviors, um, which keep a lot of lawyers employed and certainly um ties up a lot of time for law enforcement. Um, the thing is love, is, love is a wonderful thing, but if it doesn't work out, then walk away. Don't spend the rest of your life trying to take revenge on someone because they didn't love you back. And that is a lot easier said than done. Wouldn't you say, Dr. Pat? Oh, you're, you're muted. They, they have already moved on with their new person somewhere. But today's show is to help all of you call it. The phone lines are lined up. We're going to go to a very short break. When we come back, we'll go right to the phone. But today's show is, is helping you rise up. You know, there's a reason that I didn't study clinical psychology. There's a lot of reasons. The main reason was I couldn't say the word spirituality in the state of Washington, and that was not going to work for me. Uh, so you go to school for 10 years only to find out, oopsie. I'm not going to be able to practice this. But what I love about what I do under the coaching umbrella and using the psychology of behavior and cognitive psychology, I get to say to people, you got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. And if you don't, let me help you. Let's take a short break, everybody. We will be right back with the psychic and the doc. Everybody, love is in the air. This is the psychic and the doc and the phone lines are open. 1-800-930-2819. Before we start, Mark, people are going to want to know how do they follow you? Where are you going? What are you up to? Tell everybody where you are. Then we're going to go turn this over to Sierra and go right to the phones. Absolutely. I got a lot of things going on this month. And if you go to my website, afterlifefrequency.com, you can find out about the light circles I have coming up on February, Friday, February, I think it's the 16th and Saturday, the 17th. 
They're limited to six people each. It's online. I get to spend time with everybody. Make sure you get connections. So please visit my website, afterlifefrequency.com. And then um, from the 22nd through the 26th, I'll be in Houston, Texas at Body, Mind, and Soul um, of Houston and on KHOU, CBS TV's Great Day Houston with uh, Deborah Duncan. And uh, that is just the start of my U.S. tour. So um, please go to my website, afterlifefrequency.com. Also, this month, a new edition of Best Holistic Life magazine just came out. And the editor-in-chief, Jana Short, is a, is a great friend of the show. We're going to have her as a guest again, um, I think probably in June. Uh, her schedule is so busy. And um, I do want to tout my latest article, uh, which is entitled, By George, Six Decades of the Beatles. Because 60 years ago, on February 9th of 1964, Ed Sullivan, the number one show in America, came out and said, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. And I don't think the world has been the same ever since. I don't think so either. Wow. Oh boy. Thanks for reminding me of that year. Holy cow. Let's go to the phone, Sierra. Up first, we have Susan from Colorado. Susan from Colorado, you are live. Hey, Susan, welcome to The Psychic and the Doc. Great to have you. How can we help you tonight? Hey, Susan, are you there? Well, we may need to go to our next caller. Yeah, let's go to Denise. <laughs> Susan will be back. So go ahead, Sierra. Let's take the next caller. Okie dokie. Denise, you are live. Denise from Florida. Hi, Denise. Welcome to The Psychic and the Doc. How can we help you tonight? Well, first, I'd like to say Happy New Year to both of you. Thank you. Um, how can you help me? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I've been, I haven't been in a real relationship in forever. A lot of my fault, I haven't pursued a relationship because I have a friend and uh, we've been friends for an extremely long time. So it's like, you know, even though he only comes around every couple of months and we hang out, it's like I'm not pursuing anything, but I'm finding that I am getting older and I'm getting lonely. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of wondering if anybody upstairs has any hints. <laughs> well, you, you came to the right place let's see um denise i'm getting a female energy associated with your female which would, would mean your mother's side of the family um and she is on the the generational level um above you so it could be um on the mother or aunt level but it could be on the grandparent level this woman, she had kind of a, a roundish type face. Like it wasn't real oval. It was kind of round. Um, admittedly, prior to passing, she did have a few extra pounds on her. Um, and what I'm getting with her is it, uh, getting a sense of confusion prior to passing, but just prior to passing. So she was pretty sharp all the way up. But, you know, last, last week or so, some confusion. That's probably medications because I am tasting... Um, a lot of bitter sensations in my mouth, which would indicate that she was on a lot of medications. Looks to me, based on what I'm seeing and feeling, I'm getting IVs. Uh, so she was under some type of medical treatment prior to passing. And the poor thing, um, I feel that her heart, it was just laboring, laboring. I mean, she, her heart was just laboring to continue beating until it didn't. Um, and she has this complete sense of exhaustion. Uh, she was so weak uh, toward the end. Um, th do you recognize this person? Yes, I do. Okay. What is her relationship to you? Please don't give me her name, just the relationship. Uh, it sounds like my best friend that passed away in December. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on. Last, last December, I should say, last December. Okay, hold on. Let's see what she has to tell you. Boy, she didn't mince words, did she, when she was here? No. She said, get off your beep and do something about your love life. What? 
You think just sitting on your beep is going to do something for you? What do you expect? Like some spirit's going to come down in the form of Prince Charming? Get off your beep and do something. Wow. Um, yeah, I say the same thing to myself. <laughs> well, she's saying it too, and you can figure out what the beep was. Uh, this is a semi-G-rated mm -hmm. show, so we try not to um, let anything yeah. there. But basically, and she, you know, she's not trying to be unkind, but she said that you've gotten into this routine where you're feeling too comfortable not doing anything about a relationship, that it's never going to happen until you do something about it. And she said, lady, you are one happening girl. Get off your and do something. Well, she likes that phrase a lot. <laughs> yeah, she got spicy in her older age. <laughs> I could see that. Hey, um, before I turn it over to Dr. Pat, it was so funny when you said spicy, all of a sudden I'm tasting like uh, a calamari, a, ca a spicy calamari sauce over linguine. Did you like that? Did she like that? Ooh, What's up with the calamari? Ooh. We both did. Yes, yes, the <laughs> two of us, yes. Okay, there's the yeah. verifiable fact following the message <laughs> Dr. Pat is talking about. When a spirit gives me a message of an explanatory advisory nature, and basically she's saying get off your duff and do something about your, your love life because you do have a lot to offer and you're one happening lady, but you're the one that has to make it happen. All right, so that's the advice and explanation. And then when the spirit immediately follows that up with an objectively verifiable fact, spicy calamari let's say a calamari fra diablo sauce over linguine um the verifiable fact of that particular dish is how the spirit is letting you and i know that we have properly received yeah. and interpreted the message before that and i think dr pat i can't top calamari with spicy no. fra diablo sauce so now I'm yeah. turning this over to you. Well, I had to tell you, I mean, what I love about this, uh, Denise, what I love about Mark and what he just did here is calamari is not for everyone. I mean, we know that, right? No, I, no, no. Right. I mean, no, you have to really love that. But here's what I want to say. I think you're getting insight. So I think you're getting what I like to call a psychic nudge. And that nudge is saying to you, and unfortunately it is, through loneliness. Um, you know, the, I'm, I'm so glad you were so real with your emotions when you came in because that feeling of loneliness and, you know, my heart goes out to you for losing your best friend. I believe me, you have no idea how almost real that came for me this past year. And I want to say to you, it is an honor and a, and a privilege to have people in our lives like that. They're very difficult to replace. You know what I'm saying? They're yes, very difficult to replace. The older we get, you know. <sighs> the you older we get, for yeah. Years. Oh, yeah, and no kidding. But boy, do they know us. Um, mm -hmm. But the nudge that I'm sensing for you, and I usually don't go in this direction, um, it's less about getting in the world, you know, I, I know that the answer on the love bug show tonight would be, yeah, get in the world, go find someone. But that's not what I'm feeling. Can I tell you what I'm feeling for you? And I hope you can do it. Can you be of service? Is there any place you can go volunteer? Yes, I do volunteer. Okay. You do. Because somehow that volunteer work and I, you know, somehow I'm, I think you need a little bit more of it, but somehow mm -hmm. the volunteer work is a substitute. Can I call you? It, and it's a good substitute, by the way, but it's not long-term. Oh, yeah. And I, I think mean, you, you know, gives, gives you a reason to get up. It gives you a reason to get up. Now, I don't know if you have the ability to do more of it. But I don't know why I feel like you need that connection with people. You need mm -hmm. more of that connection with people. And volunteering is a great way to start. Um, what does that feel like to you? Are you okay with that? You willing to give that a shot? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. it gets you up. It gets you out. And I'll tell you this, it gives you a sense of purpose in the world well, when yeah, i was I said, yeah. you know it gets you yeah it gets you out it gets you going get you, out. Get you out of bed yeah you i'm not kidding i i am you, right there with you, you, you i'm telling you you volunteer I, I, so now you oh, have to do it 
oh, there's nothing like getting rid of that depression than putting yourself out there. So mm -hmm. hopefully you'll try that, okay? And now Mark okay. and I are going to have some calamari, if you don't Boy, mind. that sounds good. <laughs> oh, oh my what. gosh, it does. That it does, does sound good. As soon as you said it, now, now I, you know, hey, Got to get, got to grab somebody and go to a nice Italian restaurant. And that's what and I'm saying. Go grab go. somebody right now. Yep. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I got, I, I don't know where I'm going to find an Italian restaurant here that has good calories. Arrivederci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sierra. Who do we have next? Oh, I could taste that. Uh, oh. Next, mm. we have. Moxie yeah. from Granite Falls. Moxie from Granite Falls. You hey, Moxie. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Good. How can we help you today? I'll turn you over to Mark um, right here. <laughs> uh, I was just calling because I um, sometimes have trouble believing that the love that I'm receiving is meant for me, that I deserve it. And I can sometimes find myself in like a, a self-sabotaging kind of cycle. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to ask, how do I better accept love and like believe the people in my life when they say they, they love me? And, and how do I believe that like I deserve that love? Mm. Interesting. You know, Dr. Pat, I almost want to um, say kick that oh, off. But before, go ahead. Go ahead. before Moxie, did you ever have a little dog, kind of maybe like a, a curly haired, like kind of a poodle or terrier type mix, a little dog that passed? Um, I didn't have a dog that passed, but I had a Labradoodle um, in my last relationship. But when we broke up, I never saw the dog again. So I don't know mm. if that dog has passed, but I had a curly-haired Labradoodle. Interesting, because yeah. I'm getting the image of a curly-haired dog. Okay, real sweet disposition. And the reason that this is being transmitted to me is because with a dog, you never have to question if the dog loves you, because the love is unconditional. And that's the message and the message. And, and this is definitely a job for Dr. Pat to interpret this um, is that you are having a very difficult time understanding that there is unconditional love. In other words, they're telling me that you put so many conditions on love that it is conditional love, not unconditional all right, Dr. Pat, that's the message. And mm -hmm. and I know if anyone can can <laughs> unravel that plate of linguine, mm -hmm. that's you. Yeah. And, you know, Moxie, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm not one of these people when we talk about situations and especially about something as delicate as you brought up, I don't give it a broad brush stroke. And the reason I don't is because every situation is different. And let me give you a couple of examples, okay? I'm not saying this is about you, but if you grow up like I did and you absolutely don't have any real role models to express that, especially in your developmental years, like to age five. And in my case, I was bopped around to a whole bunch of relatives. And I, the good news is I did get to spend time with my birth month, albeit a short period of time. So. While, while that's a major part of, let's just say my mojo, there are things we learn in our lives, especially if we don't have any basis to do anything but mistrust. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you know, and I'm not saying that's true for you. I don't, I don't know about your family, but nine times out of 10, if we walk on the ledge and the ledge represents love or not getting love. What I say to people is that getting to the ledge is harder than taking the leap of faith to love. And I know that sounds weird, but it really is true. Getting to the ledge, right? What you have to go through to get to know a person, for that be vulnerable about letting them get to know you. Can you trust them? You know, any anytime they sneeze the wrong way, oh, that's a red flag. Oh my gosh, look at them. They're sneezing like my uncle. 
But this is the trick in life and love. You can go through life with an open heart. You can go through life with a closed heart. And then there's everything in between. And it sounds like you're in the in-between stage, yeah. which is really good news. Because if you're in the, in the in-between stage, you get one foot in, no love, and one foot in, all love. And when I work with people at this level, I say to them, look, you've got to feel the environment out. You've got to, you've got to feel it out to the point where you know you're going to be able to trust this. Now, this is going to be unusual for me to say to you. But sometimes our intuition about who we should love and who we shouldn't love is absolutely true. And this could simply be a case of you not finding somebody that you can really love. But in society, we make you think there's something wrong with you. And I'm saying, I'm not mm -hmm. sure I think there's something wrong with you. I think that discernment and giving our heart away is very, very important in life. And when you do decide to do that, it's going to be a rocky road. You're going to step in potholes. People are going to do strange things. And you think, why did they do that? The hardest part of love from where I've sit and the people I've worked with hasn't been to fall in love, it's been to stay in love. And I have a funny feeling that's at the crux of your question. I'm not sure though. What do you think, Moxie? No, I think all of that like makes a lot of sense. I, I think I find myself in positions where I start to love and then I get really scared and I, I pull yeah. back. Um, and I, yeah. I do relate to like having like a rocky childhood and never, you know, feeling stable. No. Um, so finding myself in a stable situation now feels really foreign and I don't know, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to like lose it because I don't know how to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally understand it. Let me tell you, in my young years, uh, in my, my early years, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm not like this now, but in my early years, my friend knew me, friends knew me so well, they got me a t-shirt. Like, you know, the t-shirt you get with the circle around it, with the red sign in it, you, you know, those circles were like the no smoking sign, yeah. right? They got me one with the word yeah. commitment in it. So <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just saying that, but that was me unapproachable uh, because of how I grew up. And it wasn't until I met somebody later in life, you know, maybe I was 22, that I really got to understand that I could trust someone. And I have to tell you, I am still making amends to that person from my unstable behavior that I brought forward. But we are the best of besties. And I wanna say that that is just a journey some of us may have to take, but I'm encouraging you not to give up because love is not one of those things that dissipates and goes away. Try to hold it in your heart and every time you get an opportunity, try to trust a little bit, a little bit more. But I'm going to say this last thing to you. You have a gift. I have the gift too. You have a gift. And that gift is to be able to have love radar that tells you, oopsie, I think this person's a real jerk. And if that's what you get, run quickly. Does that help you, Moxie? <laughs> I hope that helps you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for calling in. Oh my goodness, that commitment t-shirt, that I wonder if I still got that in a box <laughs> somewhere. Let's take a short break here <laughs> if we could and we'll come right back to the phones. Welcome back. You are listening to The Psychic and the Doc. For more information about us, and by the way, if you've missed any episodes of this, go to transformationtalkradio.com, Transformation Network. Also, Mark, there are ways people can find out about you. Please tell them how to do that, and then we'll go to the phones. Yes, please visit my website, which is afterlifefrequency.com, just like my latest book, The Afterlife Frequency. I've got some great online spiritual events coming up February uh, 16th and 17th. And if you go to the calendar of events, 
you can sign up for those. Um, they're limited to six people each. They're light circles, so I get to spend time with everybody. Then I'll be in Houston um, later on in the month, the uh, 23rd and 24th at Body, Mind, and Soul of Houston, where I'll be doing spirit communication events, uh, as well as the CBS Morning Show, Great Day Houston. So you can find out about all that at my website, afterlifefrequency.com. And Dr. Pat, speaking of readings and taking calls from listeners, what do you say we go back to the phone lines? Let's do it, Sierra. Up next, we have Catherine from Florida. Catherine, you are live. Hey, Catherine. How are you? Hello. I'm great. Um, thank you both so much. I hope you can hear me. I have um, I have my speakerphone on. Can you hear me? I, I got you pretty loud and clear there. Okay. Good. What what can we do for you tonight? You know, I hope you're not wanting the calamari. We already gave that out tonight. What can we do oh, for no, you? I don't, I don't like calamari. At That's all. what I thought. <laughs> That's what I said before. Yeah. Y'all can have all of it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me turn you over to Mark if I can, Catherine. Thank you. Hi, Catherine. Thank what can, what what can I do for you? Hi. Um. <laughs> I'm so happy. I got, I called last week and didn't get through. Anyhow, um, my daughter is on the other side. So I'm calling to see if she will come through. Do you have a father um, or a father figure in spirit as well? Yes. Your dad's in spirit? Yes. Yeah, because he, he is there with your daughter. The reason I'm asking about him is because he's the one stepping forward first. Don't worry. We'll get your daughter coming in. Um, he's coming through first. Um, and do you know if he was having difficulty walking or having some type of problem with um, one or both of his legs? Because I feel like um, like if I was trying to stand up, I'd have a real I would be having a very difficult time standing. Does that make any sense? Um, he had, he died from lung cancer. OK, so, so I, I imagine know. he probably wasn't walking much prior to passing is what I'm thinking. Um, hold on. Hold on. Are you a smoker? Catherine? Um, no, I don't smoke cigarettes. Um, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> herbal. Like, yeah, I, I would herbal, herbal um, therapy sometimes to relax occasionally. Yeah, as a I former love pro that herbal therapy, <laughs> herbal therapy as a former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney, that's code for we know what. Um, so I would say be real careful because your dad's talking about smoking. And I know that, uh, you know, people think that cannabis is the answer to everything. However, Studies have come out that indicate that smoking cannabis is even worse for your lungs than smoking tobacco. And so your dad right, is transmitting that to you. Okay. Well, now, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a younger female energy coming through and with her passing. And first off, please accept my condolences, Dr. Pat, and uh, condolences everybody here at TTN on the passing of your daughter. No Thank mom you. should go through, no mom should go through what you're going through, okay? Also, please understand when I start giving evidence about how people passed, I tend to sound clinical. I'm feeling this, getting this, and I don't mean it that way. It, it's, I'm, we're very sympathetic. Okay. I'm just giving you what they're transmitting to me. And sometimes it sounds like a data punch list. Okay, so she's like really wanting to get to this. Now, um, the, the interesting sensation that I'm getting I'm getting a pain in um, below my left rib cage. Uh, it could be in the area of the kidneys, but it feels a bit above that. I also feel this is a weird sensation. It's like my lungs are glass. So there was something going on which was making her lungs very, very um, brittle, very sensitive. And then I feel this real quick passing. It's like all of a sudden... I feel so sedated and numb um, and I'm getting a sharp pain in my head. And normally when I get a sharp pain in the head, that can indicate either a trauma or an unexpected or quick passing. So to recap, could be a quick unexpected passing, could be trauma, weird, strange sensation. It's like all of a sudden my lungs are 
are operating and then they feel like they're glass and a sharp pain in the um, lower right, excuse me, left side of the rib cage uh, radiating down into the kidney and hip. Does any of that make any sense to you? Yes. <clears throat> yes, it, she was it, killed instantly by a drunk driver at the age of 17. It was instant. Oh, so that's okay. And that would make a lot of sense of that. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. No, um, it's fine. The girl in the car, the girl in the passenger seat walked away, but my daughter was killed instantly. It was a small car. It was just a miracle that her friend walked away from the accident and she was killed instantly. Because was your daughter was driving? Was she driving? Yes. Oh, so yes. was the collision to the um, uh, uh, left front side of the vehicle? It, yes, more likely, yes. Um, that would make correct. sense why I'm feeling the pain in my left lung, left, uh, lower left. Okay. All right. Um, um, all right. Hold on. Yeah. She died instantly. Instantly. Yes. Um, and sorry, I don't mean to say she died instantly. It's like she, here's how I'm describing this. She was like a rocket lifting off right out of her body. And yeah. that's how she's describing it. She's looking down and seeing the car like shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. She said she was out of her body so quick and she felt this immediate euphoria as she connected with the other side. And Good. she said, um, she's talking about um, there's a name, a Rosie or a Rosalind or some, some female with some type of name like Rose or Rosalind. Um, that was was one of the several people there to greet her. Do you have a Rosie or a Rosalind or a Rosemary in spirit? Do you, do you know anybody by that name or a name similar to that? No, I don't. I want you to think about that because it's a Rosalie, Ro Rosalind, something like that. I was one of the people there to greet her. Uh, and it's funny because she said the lady smells like Jergens hand cream. You know that Jergens hand cream's got that rose. Oh, the rose water yeah. smell. All right, yeah. all right. Oh, okay. Who's the older woman that used to use the Jergens that always smelled like rose water? There's got to be my somebody. Mom, my mom used that lotion, but her name isn't that. And that no, 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 no. We got to get to the rose part. Your mom used that. Did your mother predecease your daughter? No, she died after my daughter, a few no, years, like no, five years later. But she no. used that lotion. <laughs> I understand so, that, but but all right, please listen. Um, there was a woman in spirit who greeted your daughter that I can smell the jurgen. So it's somebody else. Okay. So so and sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but but that's what I was saying. But your mother is in this world and uses mm -hmm. that's not who she's talking about. She's talking about the lady who greeted her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she's also showing me um, a rosary. Now, a rosary, I was raised in the Catholic faith, and I get a lot of Catholic imagery, um, but I believe me, I'm not pushing the religion on anybody. But a rosary could once again mean someone with a name like Rose or Rosemary, but it could also mean a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event, which could be connected to you, to your daughter, um, or someone close to you within the month of May. And because May is dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus, it could be a variation on the name Mary, like Mary, Marilyn, Margaret, Marianne. Anything there makes sense to you? Um, the month of May, I have a sister, a younger sister, whose birthday is, who was born in May. Okay. Um, is there anything else in May or somebody with a variant on the name Mary? Nothing else You're, that I can think of. Yeah, there's 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 some, yeah there's something there. There's something there. Just out of curiosity, is anyone in your family Catholic? That's either a yes I or a no. Raised, well, <laughs> um, I wasn't raised Catholic. My two sisters, I have, um, they joined the Catholic Church when they got married. Well, that's a yes. Okay. All right. All right, so I want to get a, a, a message from your daughter. See, if we were doing a one-on-one -on -one or in a light circle, I'd have more time to spend with you. But these are things that your daughter's bringing up, okay? 
Um, and she mm -hmm. said that this is interesting. What's with all the lemon drops? Lemon could be lemon lime, but I'm getting all this lemon drops. I don't know, but if, I'm writing it down. So well, hold on, <laughs> hold on. If if, if if I say lemons, <laughs> lemon drops, lemonade, that sweet lemon, sweet and sour flavor, what immediately comes to mind for you? Don't worry about how it applies to your daughter. How does that make sense to you? You're thinking too hard. See, when people overthink and think too hard, it creates a block. Mm. You got to go with what hits you first. Okay. The thing is, I think what your daughter's telling you is with the lemon lime that you've reached a point of bitter sweetness in your life where you recall the sweet loving memories of her, but now you're immersed in the bitterness of, of uh, the pain from her passing. And she does come to you quite often, she said, but the problem is you want the contact so much without meaning to, you're building an energy barrier. So you've got to bring down those barriers. Mm -hmm. Stop overthinking. Stop wanting the contact so much. Um, and she said, and get to the point where you're not so angry about her passing. Now, I know that's easier said than done. But that's what she wants you to know. Dr. Pat. I have a question for you. Thank you so much. And boy, I'll tell okay. you, I, I you. cannot even imagine. I do have a question for you. I really, I can't even imagine. But I do have a question because as soon as Mark said it, I could not get this woman out of my mind. Who was your mother's mother? Who was that woman? Her name your mother's was mother. Like well, your grandmother. See, I, was adopt, I was adopted. I was adopted. So um, which mother? Are you talking about the mother who raised me? Or It doesn't matter. It mother? doesn't matter. But they're not here anymore. Correct? Okay. Um, let's see. My adopted mother is on the other side. And her mother, yeah. grand, my grandmother would be named, her name was Ruth. Okay, good. And... What do you remember about this woman? Just give me a couple of things. She was a heavy smoker. <laughs> um, she would come to visit us from Kansas with her husband. Um, yep. She had a little dog. Yeah. Um, she was really loud. <laughs> like yep. she talked. What, really what did she loud. smell like? What did she smell like? What did she? What kind of lotion did she use? Peppermint and cigarettes. <laughs> God, I love I love that combination, by the way. Okay, <laughs> because this when Mark was talking about the lotion, this woman, I couldn't get this woman out of my consciousness. And then when he said Rose, um, and then the mentioned the lotion, Rose lotion, Rose, by the way, was, I mean, if you go back, Mark, 75 years, let's say, if you go back 75 years, Rose was the natural go-to for every lotion. That's oh, why I'm really? asking about the multi-generational. Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the, e roses are one of the easiest and most fragrant things to make things out of, right? Makes and sense, so yeah. That's why I'm asking. There's somebody that, I, I want you to think about what Mark said, because there's somebody that has something to do with roses and I don't know what it is. And it might not be that woman, but there's somebody that did greet your daughter that it just, when he said it, I got a hit of it. Now I'm not a psychic medium, so I don't have no idea, but I get, I got an association with that. There was somebody else that greeted your daughter that must have smelled really good a lot. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a family member. Mind no, you. it doesn't. It somebody it else. Doesn't. And she's also, that lady had a little um, wristwatch. It was a gold band with a little tiny um, uh, clock face. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to think about that because a lot of these things, I'm sorry, Dr. Pat, I yeah, mean, interrupt, right, no, is, right. are, are not going to be immediately apparent. It requires yeah. time to think about it. People expect this to be like Alexa and it isn't. And it, <laughs> you need time to think about it. Okay. Um, so, so reflect on that. Reflect yeah. On, I'm sorry. I'm going to get, Go I'm going to get, that's okay, Mark. I wanted you to say that because I want you to, but I'm going to give you my take on the lemon. Are you ready? Lemon yeah. is also a purifier. It's a cleanser. Lemon water will help you cleanse your system. Didn't that come up today for her to really yeah, take a look at some of the habits? Right. So yeah. 
this is all pointing to you, whether they're lemon drops, you know, lemon water, lemon is a great cleanser. Now make sure you're not allergic to it, but I would highly recommend after what I heard Mark say today, you got a little detoxing to do. And I bet you're not going to argue with me on that, right? Well, I just um, found out I had a CT scan and found out I have a kidney stone and a kidney cyst. And I there need we to drink go. more lemon water. And um, <laughs> there uh, we I've are. Been cider, <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking cider vinegar in like ginger ale because that's a good drink for kidney problems. But they told and, you to drink lemon and, water, so right? Lemon. Yeah, I need to do the lemon, the lemon and olive oil together. Whatever they told you to do with the lemon, now you're getting the other side people saying, do the lemon, please. Do the lemon. Do the lemon. Do the lemon. Yeah, that does. That makes sense. It does. I mean, I got that right away. And uh, yeah, um, look, you're on a great path. If you just follow a couple of things we've said today, follow your doctors, of course. But if you're being told by your doctor, drink lemon water, run, don't walk, right? Right? right Le lemon water right easy all right thank you so much and again our hearts I, I i can't even imagine thank you so much for calling in thank you thank, thank you. you both I, I appreciate the reading thank you thank you right. wow. god bless you thank you um that yeah, reminded it's, me i gotta drink some of my lemon more lemon water that was just a good reminder for me lemon water is a very good thing to uh, prevent kidney stones because yeah. It cleans out your liver, your kidneys, uh, yeah. your bladder. It's it's a really important. And when spirits bring things like that up, when people overanalyze and take everything literally, they you create a block. Yeah. And that's what I love about working with you, Dr. Pat, because you get people to start thinking of the symbolism and the metaphor. And see, that, everybody, is, is part of what makes this show so unique. Because there's nobody else with our skill set, our backgrounds, and our abilities that um, I'm receiving the messages, and Dr. Pat is helping people interpret them. Um, and it's just been such a privilege to do this. In fact, it's so fun. I it's, mean, it's fun. And it's hard. And, it's yeah. also, I, I want to say, look, we do laugh a lot here, but I'm telling you, there isn't a moment in this show that our hearts are not open to all of you. I, it's yeah. hard for us to even imagine everybody that calls in and we do take a moment to have fun about the love boat, but I'm telling you uh, that cleansing with the lemon, whatever that is. Oh, bingo. Mark, thank you so much. You're oh. so amazing. And I guarantee you, she will call back and we will find out about the rose. And oh I yeah. Almost, oh yeah. I almost want to bet a dollar on this. That it's some kind of rose lotion or something like that. It could even be rose water. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mark, thank you so much for everything. Please mention your website one more time. Afterlifefrequency.com. Please sign up for my newsletter because I got one going out tonight after the show, everybody. Ah. Afterlifefrequency.com. And Dr. Pat and I will be back next week on Transformation Talk Radios, The Psychic and the Doc. God bless. Good night, everyone. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic and the Doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems? Yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the doc that's every thursday 4 p.m pacific time 7 p.m eastern time right here on transformationtalkradio.com that's transformationtalkradio.com and don't forget we're also live face to face on facebook.com transformation talk radio